This is the book of Acts 8 verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, and to the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, and to Gaza, which is desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge over who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. And what you had to, what you need to understand is this man of Ethiopia, this eunuch, he was an Israelite. Okay? This is the reason why he was able to what? Believe and to be baptized. Okay? Because the Lord is ultimately only dealing with his people. So when you see this, you people say, okay, this is a, a man of Ethiopia. You think, you think he's an African. But you got to ask yourself, why did he come to Jerusalem to worship if he was an African? You see, these are questions you need to ask yourself. But for, before we get into that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Salutations to you, brothers, to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and laboring this word in truth, love, and sincerity. So let's go back to verse 27 again. And hopefully, I can pull, pull a few precepts to help you understand this. Verse 27 it says, And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge over all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Okay, now when you go to the second chapter in Acts, right? Let's read this. It says, Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of the of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Right? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak the other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And these other tongues, you know, it's about to, about to break down and tell you these, these other languages, okay? It says, And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So, the scattered Israelites were coming back to Jerusalem for what? To keep the feast of Pentecost. Okay? So let's read verse 5 again. It says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Um, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean, uh, Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And I was going to name these different places, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phrygia, uh, Pamphylia, and Egypt, in a part of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of the Lord. You know, so you got different men, which Jews are coming from all these different lands and speaking in these different languages. Okay, but it all goes back to what they were Jews. You see, the fifth verse, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men, and when you go to the word devout, it means uh, a person that reverences the heavenly, the Most High, okay, the Heavenly Father, out of every nation under out, under heaven. So you know, due to the curses that the Israelites were scattered under every nation, okay. So there's going to be a time where what these uh, Israelites that were scattered abroad, you know, will end up uh, falling off from their ways, right, and start to follow the ways of the other nations. Which that takes on learning their uh, language, learning their customs, you know. And some of them, uh, a lot of them leaving off from their own heritage, okay. And those will be called what? The Israelite foreigners, okay. The, the Gentiles, if you will. All right. The Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, okay. 
which also you can tie in what the Greek speaking Jews. Okay. Because the, even though they spoke Greek, some of the, some Israelites spoke Greek. They were what? They were all still Israelites. Okay. So uh, you know, let's read verse, Acts verse eight twenty seven again. It says, "And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge over all her treasure, and had and had and had come to Jerusalem for for to worship." Okay, now let's go to the law. Hold on, let's look at the word of Pentecost real fast. Uh, word of Pentecost, right? This is the 50th day. It says the second of the three great, we'll see, Jew feasts, right? Because there's no such thing as Jewish, celebrated at Jerusalem yearly, the seventh week after the Passover, and grateful recognition of the completed harvest. Okay, so you had to come. To Jerusalem to what? To, to keep uh, three of the feasts, you know that it's meant that it, I believe it mentioned. I didn't mention them all here. So you had to come to Jerusalem to keep the feast of the Lord. Okay. Um, real fast, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy. Sixteen verse sixteen. It's lucky. I want to. I'm gonna get into the lesson. You know, that's at hand. But I want to go into this. You know, if anyone didn't understand what who this Ethiopian eunuch was, because he's an Israelite. Okay. So uh, Deuteronomy 16 verse 16. It says, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord, thy power, in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of the weeks, in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Okay, so you got to ask yourself, you know, why would this heathen come to Jerusalem to worship when it was already told that the Israelites are supposed to come to Jerusalem to worship? Okay, and he just happened to be a, a Ethiopian eunuch. Okay, which is an Israelite by blood. All right, no matter you know the land he was brought up in and the land he was born in, by blood he's an Israelite. Verse 28, it says, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understand thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You know, so just going into... Uh, what I basically wanted to start the lesson, you know, that the spirit had me uh, going to uh, this e man of Ethiopian and eunuch while he went to Jerusalem to worship. You know, it's basically that, you know, you're supposed to be taught, man. Okay. You got to be guided through the spirit, man. Of course, through the spirit and power of Yah, Bashim, Yah, Shah, but the Lord set up men to teach you. Okay. Men that will guide you in the scriptures to help build you up. You know. So let's read verse 30 again. It says, And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand this what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So uh, so uh, uh, Philip can guide him through the scriptures, man. You know? And it was all through the spirit of the Lord. Just like how the Lord, man, the Lord has, has everything today, man. He has uh, men, right? Prophets, teachers, you know, building up other young men, uh, prophets and teachers, you know, guiding them through the scriptures, okay, and, and breaking down the scriptures the right, right way through the spirit and power of Yah, Bashim, Shai. And those teachers and those leaders and those prophets are the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and the men on down, okay, that's helping us understand these scriptures better, you know, building us up in the spirit of these scriptures. Okay. Let's get the book of Jeremiah. No, Slakia. I'll get. Let's get the book of Isaiah thirty verse twenty first. Okay, because the Lord set up teachers, man. All right. 
Isaiah 30 verse 20 It says And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity And the water of affliction Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore But thy eyes shall see thy teachers So the men of the Lord, the teachers are out there, man That the Heavenly Father set up, man We out there, we on the highways and byways, man We not hid in any, any more corners you know, We out there on the front line so you can see Trying to teach you the word Okay Trying to teach you the words and, and the true wisdom and the hidden secrets Of Yah Bashim Yah Bashai, man Let's read that again Isaiah 30 verse 20 it says And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity And the water of affliction Yet shall not Thy teachers be removed into a corner Anymore But thy eyes shall see thy teachers And thy ears shall hear A word behind thee Saying this is the way Walk ye in it When you turn to the right hand And when you turn to the left And don't The men on the highways and byways I speak these words into to the people And I'm speaking unto the men About the men of great millstone on down And the men that preach in this, With the same doctrine Okay Prophesying uh, You know Preaching the word of Yah Bashim Yah Shai You know Don't you You hear these words coming from us Like hey This is the truth man You You, you so called blacks Latinos and Native Americans You need to turn to the Holy Bible Man You need to repent you need to fear the Lord. See, this is the way. This is your only way. Every other way, you're not going to make it, man. You're going to be caught up here and destroyed in America, Babylon, and great. So ultimately, we say that this is the way walking in it. But our people don't want to hear that. See, they want to walk uh, in their own ways, man. They want to walk in their own counsels or the counsel from the so called white man, which is Esau Edom. You know? But hey, the blood is off our hands because we give them warning from the Lord. You know, we we out there giving them the message. It's up to it's up for them to take it. You know, and you know what? I I take that back. I don't even want to say it's up to them to take it because you know it's really up to the Lord. It's up to Yah Bashim Yah Bashah if He want to give them this precious knowledge or not. You know, because a lot of these people are not even worthy to obtain this these hidden riches. You know, that's why, uh, like King David, King David said, let their table be made a, stare, a snare, you know, for them not to even get this truth. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to Jeremiah 3, verse 15, because the point is, look, man, uh, there's teachers in this thing, man. All right. There's men that's going to guide you back into the Holy Scriptures the right way. You see, Jeremiah 3 verse 15, it says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's what the true pastors are going to do. They're going to they're gonna watch out for you, man. You know, they're going to feed you with this knowledge and wisdom and understanding, man. You know, but as it says here, which shall feed you with knowledge and, and understanding. You know, and that's what pastors are going to do. Uh, the pastors are going to uh, attend to their flock, man. Okay. They're not going to uh, uh, abandon them. You see? But they're going to feed them. Okay. They're going to keep them well nourished. And how do you feed them, feed people? How do you keep them well nourished? Through the Holy Scriptures, man. Okay. Because this is truly uh, the, the, the sufficient... Uh, food and, and, and water that you need to, uh, that you need to take that's ultimately the, the best benefit for your body man your soul your mind okay and that's why the scriptures say in um uh, John what is it John oh, where's it at John Lock it, John. John seven and thirty-eight. Um, here we go. John seven and thirty-eight. It says, 
He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow livings and living water. And that's right, man. Okay, you believe in the Lord as the scripture said. Um, there's another one in John that I actually wanted. Uh, let's lock it right here. John 6 verse 35. Um, I'll start at 34. It says, Then said unto him, The Lord evermore give us this bread. And your house shall said unto them, I am the bread of life. You see? And he that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me Shall never thirst. You see, so we gotta continue to believe on Yah by Shemel Shah, man. You know, he's they're our ultimate ultimate nourisher, man. You know. This word, this bread of life, this water, you know, because the scriptures is likened to uh all those things, oil, honey. Okay, these these things will continue to nourish nourish us through the spirit, man. Okay, through the spirit. You know, so hey, you know, I just wanted to touch on a quick lesson, you know, that hey man, somebody gotta guide you through these scriptures, man. That's how the Lord set things up. Okay, so don't be, you know, try to shy away from that. Uh there's men above you. You know, that he may be a younger brother and you're older just coming in. You gotta understand that uh your age, right? You may be older in age, but in the spirit, you're younger because that 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 other brother, that younger brother, uh, we're just using this as an example, might be above you in the spirit, man. You know, but that same brother is trying to uh, build you up and, and feed you through the spirit that what that you may be well nourished through the spirit and power of Yahweh man. And 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 this and this is vice versa, okay? This is vice versa. You know, but the point is, hey, man, someone has to guide you, guide you through these scriptures, man. Okay, you don't just wake up one morning and just open a Bible and, and you just uh, the Holy Spirit pop up on you and you just learn all the breakdowns. You know, not saying that the Lord can't do it, cause there's nothing impossible with Yahweh Shinoshia. You know, but the Lord set up a way how He's going to do this thing. You know, 